Welcome to the evening news. I am Newsman Kerman. Confusion reigns in the streets of Cadenza today as the government dissolves. I never thought I'd see the day, says one onlooker. One moment they were being boring and discussing foreign policy. Then the roof started leaking and all members of government just dissolved into puddles. Scientists are said to be stunned at this turn of events and recommend against any government following this new and crazy trend. A remembrance service will be held next turn, hosted by Kita at the old Democratic Republic of Cadenza's headquarters, the KSC2. Back home, the traitorous dogs of Joffrey's Legion carried out a cowardly attack against unbeatable odds at the naval port of Goldpool, damaging several vessels and forcing our pilots to give their lives in defence of the values of Kita. Giddy from their near-death experience, the aggressive attackers misread their GPS systems and ran straight into waiting high-altitude COVID specialists. The outcome came very much in Kita's favour. Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Combat. My name is Twitchy, and in the background you can see me redeploying some of my vessels that unfortunately had had their munitions chewed through. Yes, we had to defend ourselves at Goldpool last turn, but thankfully we lost very few of our craft. The Manta, Rip, but nothing really to worry about there. But this is all old stuff. Let's move on to the new. First up, I have lost all my air defense over at Goldpool, and that was defending my navy, so I'm going to have to put them back. I bring you the Pterodactyls. Yes, indeed, these guys have chain guns up front and a couple of uh, sidewinders just to make up the points to 30 points each. I believe it was 30 points each. Whatever the uh, the low point value is for the small planes, I have brought them up. And they're just going to sit here and defend my navy. Which is a bit of a shame because obviously the planes are the best things to attack with. But anyway, let's talk about Navy. I want to try and find another naval base. Unfortunately, a lot of my bases are very far away from the water. The first one I tried was South Hope. Big problems there. I could take, pick up my guys and take them to the water. But it's going to end up with them being very undefended by any uh, planes or anything like that that's around. So I've decided that maybe Sandy, Sandy Island is the one to go for. Uh, that looks good. Londy Island was my next choice. But unfortunately, this one... Once again, it's so far away from any water that if I put a plane on the uh, on the airstrip, it's just not going to be able to defend it. So both of them go down at Sandy Island. The final deployment today takes the shape of two ground attack units. Yes, that is right, tanks. We're going to start with the Grub. As you can see, its all-terrain capabilities are still as sharp as ever, but we have slightly retooled it. We have put a uh, chain gun up on top rather than the howitzer cannons and armed him with anti-radiation missiles because I feel like people are going to try and lock onto us with a radar. And here we have a beetle. Indeed, Ringo is his name -o. Yes, this is our beetle, the Ringo class of craft as you can see it comes with two whopping cruise missiles uh, and a few a few surprises in those bay doors back there I'm gonna call them elytra because you know that's what elytra actually are the hard wing coverings of a beetle so uh, once again my man Ringo as you can imagine, moving our ground attack troops into position is a long and arduous task, but it does give us the opportunity to get some beautiful shots, such as this overlook of the uh, of Kraken's Hole here, and we do get to drive all the way across this beautiful, serene countryside. Thankfully, the Drive Together, no, in fact, it's not even Drive Together, I thought it was the Fly Together mod, but actually, turns out BD Armory has something like the Fly Together mod inbuilt within it, and you could just be like, hey, Mr. AI Control, can you make this tank drive with me and it does it's great doesn't handle heels so well but it's something that you can use uh, much much better than just trying to drive one then the other having secured myself a five kilometer position away from sea's end the Yoffrey's legion base it's the same base we were attacking last time so i don't feel like we need to give too much context here i think it's time to deploy ringo's secret weapon yes indeed on the back here you can see that we have three separate pods the two pods on the side i'll give you the spoiler it's full of missiles but this one in the middle it has something special I'm having trouble getting open the middle pod but let me give you a little uh, pro-life tip there turn guard mode off if you want to open a cargo bay it's the only way you can get in or out and indeed inside you can see that I have a little probe uh, hidden away it is indeed a helicopter we fall over we have some troubles there are indeed some broken uh, broken things on the floor and I'm a little bit annoyed about that but you know what I'm more annoyed about something that you may not have noticed and indeed I have not noticed yet but I want to draw your attention to the battle screen in the top left we have two tanks and a helicopter in control uh, or in on our side the top team a is Joffrey's Legion and the top at bottom one is just me 
That's right, there is no weapon manager on Ringo, and the weapon managers are the lifeblood of these conflicts. Without one, the other team do not know where to aim. And thus begins one of the worst couple of days of my short, short existence on this planet. I'm going to run through it in a couple of minutes, but it literally took hours and hours to solve this issue, all because I wanted to shortcut. To be fair, those hours and hours were less time than the actual drive took, but let me get into it. The first thing that I did was, of course, go back and uh, replace, uh, put the weapon manager on to Ringo. No problem, it's, it's not a problem. We we cover situations like this in the rules. If there is a glitch, you just go and fix it and get back to where you were. But the problem is getting back to where you were. The first thing that I tried, of course, was to be using the vessel movers spawn in ship. It was great, it was easy, right? You just fix the ship, spawn it in. Oh, why would it blow up? Literally no idea why I blew it up. Uh, three or four tries later, it's still it's not working for me there. Okay, no worries. Let's do uh, let's do little short hops using Vessel Mover as a moving device. Uh, why are you falling through the floor? That obviously was quite a few hours in and of itself just doing that. It was uh, yeah, it was quite quite a mission. And of course, a weird moment where I try to go to Sea's End or Kraken's Bay. It doesn't matter which. During this particular period of time, it would just put me at the default launch pad. I I don't I don't know what was going on there at all. In fact, this is a problem that I still have to this day. War. War is not pretty. War is not cheap. Help support the cause. Donate on Patreon today. And so we come to the true showdown. It is time to get these two guys facing off against the entire base. And of course it's not really, it's a little bit disingenuous to say that these are just two guys because of course they do have this tiny little drone with them as well. I managed to uh, stick the landing a little bit better this time. Uh, whether Edgy wants to bring that up in the Grand Council, I don't know. But I managed to not blow up my uh, my solar panels this time. So I'm, go I'm going to take that as a win. The universe needed to get reset, so there, there we are. I've managed to come away a little bit better this time. My main plan with this drone, because I'm not a very good helicopter pilot, it has to be said, I can just about keep a hover going and I can just about land without blowing stuff up. Just about. That's the hard bit. Let's, let's be honest, that's the hard bit. So my main point is just to go up, uh, get myself a couple of GPS locations uh, and then abandon it because by at that point I have a feeling that the planes will be up and flying and we're going to have some trouble. Indeed, the planes are already up and flying. So I've uh, hit the pilot button on my tanks to tell them to be moving targets. Don't just sit there and get shot, guys. Let's move you around. Uh, and then I completely abandon the drone. I'm like, fine, whatever. I've got much more important stuff to do here because indeed it looks like the Ringo is just running away. I don't know what he was doing. Not the Ringo, sorry. The Grub was just running away. I don't know what he was up to. I have no idea. I told him to stop and now I've taken control of the Ringo so that we can go and use my one GPS, uh, one cruise missile. I don't know what happened to the other one. I'm going to assume it got blown up in the conflict. Uh, well done, Edgy. Uh, and there we go, the cruise missile. I think it was a good proof of concept. I blew up all, the, all their weapons on the tank rather than actually destroying the tank itself. But, you know, that's that's the ethical way. After all, we, we disarmed them. Yes. Uh, okay, talking about disarmament, uh, I'm going to try and use the Grub's anti-radiation missiles here. You can see on the radar receiver, uh, warning receiver, sorry, on the bottom left, that I do have a signals, uh, but no matter what, the uh, guard mode didn't want to fire it, and whenever I tried firing manual, it didn't seem to lock on. I don't know if there is a problem with uh, the type of radar that Edgy is using and these missiles. I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not 100% uh, up on the technicalities of the anti-radiation missiles. But Ringo took a hit, and that that was that was sad. The grab also looked like he was going to be taking hits, but because he was moving, his armor did him a good. And with the Ringo down, I was like, mm, okay, I suppose we're going to have to actually motivate myself forwards to go and um, take the base, try and deal with the ground units. I am here to cause damage. Uh, I just need to try and wear away at, um, at Edgy so that he can't build up too much of an army and come and overwhelm me. Uh, that's the thing I'm worried about, you know? Uh, I, I should imagine that Android is also doing that. But I heard a noise, and I saw the numbers drop down on the uh, on the combat list over there. There appears to be a plane missing, and this plane completely ran out of fuel. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Uh, I suppose, I mean, do we take that as a design flaw? Uh, I mean, I don't, I didn't want this to be a fight of attrition. That's going to be coming up again as well. I didn't want this to be a fight of attrition, but it does appear to be one that has uh, landed in my lap. The lack of fuel, 
I, I'm gonna assume the lack of fuel meant that the, what, the, the, the small gun that was left on Ringo was able to shoot him uh, because the maneuverability was low. So one ship went down like that. And this ship has managed to uh, pretty much land itself. I left the pilot on. I just let, let it do what it wanted to do up until the point that I was trying to stop it and save the vessel. So I turned the pilot off then and just hit the brakes. I was like, well done. You saved yourself. I'm gonna just leave you there outside. Okay, the next thing I needed to do was turn my guard mode off because I'm trying to shoot through the hill. This has me a little bit worried because, as I said, I didn't want this to be a fight of attrition. I didn't just want to, like, wear out their armor, uh, sorry, wear out their ammo or, like, run down their their batteries or run, make them run out of fuel. That really wasn't my, my plan at all. I want to get in there. I want to have a better, better uh, vessel than they do and just overwhelm them. It's what happened with the Grub last time and it's kind of what I want the Grub to be able to do this time. But that the one on the left, the tank that is just sat there up on its own little thing, the, the one that I blew up with the cruise missile, that's nice and easy to shoot at. I do not have a problem with doing that. And in fact, I have to take that out so that my guns will uh, target the other vessel. But that other vessel, that low slung ground defense unit over there, that is a trouble. It is so low slung that I'm having trouble even shooting it. As you can see, I do have the occasional explosion. So I feel like I am paring down uh, the layers of armor that he has uh, and going for my classic let's go and zoom over to see what I'm shooting at move doesn't really help all that much so I'm gonna try and get a little bit closer if it's a small target you get closer right that's angular angular um, perception and stuff like that should mean that you know something close up takes up more of my field of vision and thus is easier to shoot so I'm gonna go get down there hopefully before the other guy runs out of ammo or maybe if I'm lucky I will be able to blow up their weapons along the way it seems to be that the weapons are the the high point of their vessel if you will there is definitely um, yeah, the armor is all very low slung to the ground, but the weapons, just from necessity, have to point up and above all of that. One thing that I've got to say about the Grub is its maneuverability is unparalleled. I've not had a tank that's driven this well for a very long time, especially for one that's got a single wheel at the front, uh, or rather, uh, quite a narrow wheelbase at the front. The two landing gear on the side definitely do help. But anyway, uh, quickly scuttering across the, the sand like this, I noticed that the bullets, they're still are flying. And so I'm going to try and creep round, but oh, no, 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 that's... That's not the way to do it. He's got vision at me with both weapons. What have basically approached onto his broadside. So that's that's really not the way. So let's try and get in on the uh, on the narrow edge, the the prow, the bow. I don't know whichever one this actually happens to be. Uh, I start off by turning my guard mode on, but I've noticed how low of bullets I am starting to become. And they're trying to shoot out the tank that we've already de-armed, disclawed, if you will. Uh, so my idea is to try and declaw this tank again, uh, coming around and trying to get rid of those weapons though looking at this footage i've got to say i think we just made it run out of ammo I, th I think that might be what happened there. Anyway, we managed to get inside and blow up some of its internals. I'm going to take that as a victory because I too was nearly running out of ammo and I managed to conserve more than the computer that was firing at me. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, the Ringo, that, that's a write-off. Like that, that is not a, not a thing that we're able to say can fire and shoot. It's got no ammo on it and it can't actually drag its carcass around. Uh, it's, it's the defining feature of whether we say they are alive or not. Can it shoot? Can it drive? No. This plane, on the other hand, yes. So we're going to leave this turn in a little bit of a contested no man's land situation. I've used up all my deployments that I'm able to use, so there is not a single vehicle that I can send to sort out this situation where we've got a base defense with five bullets left in it. Yay. Uh, versus a plane that's run out of fuel. So we're just going to leave these two staring at each other here. And I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time where we are going to take this fight to Joffrey's Legion's face. In the most ethical manners, of course. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I will see you next time when we're going to do all of that. Bye.